Welcome by Inside Framer. Vandaag hebben we... Wait, that's not right. Welcome to Inside Framer. If you hadn't already guessed, today we're going to be talking about a brand new feature in Framer called localization. Okay, so to start off, we're here with Hunter. He's the product lead on localization. So uh, Hunter, as a fellow native English speaker, were you as surprised as as I was that other languages even exist? <laughs> Yeah, actually, when they came to me with this project, I had to actually Google what other languages there were, but eventually I figured it out. And uh, now we have over 500 locales built into the app. So I'm just as surprised as you are. So what was the real, uh, the genesis of this project? Like, what, what was the idea? Yeah, so people are super used to Google Translate and that gets the job done. But to make a site truly feel comfortable to someone coming to your site from wherever they are, whatever language, and background they may have, um, being able to customize that further beyond just the words is what makes it really special. So that sounds amazing. Why don't you show us how this uh, how this is to use? As an example here, we're gonna translate the meetup page from framer.com. And what's new here is if you go in the toolbar, you will now see a little globe icon. And if we click on that, we get into the main localization view. And if we add a locale, let's do Dutch because we're in the Netherlands. And I know you've been working on your Dutch mat. I'm gonna click that. And uh, this is now every piece of text, every image, every alt text, every description in our entire website. And so um, if you have a few hours here, we can actually just sit down and translate uh, our entire site. So. Well, luckily for you, I, I have a few hours. So let's... Uh... Perfect. All right. Well, uh, let's do that then. No, but obviously we don't want to translate all in one pass. So let's go into the filtering up here and we can go to the meetups page. And now we see just the strings that are translatable on the meetups page. We can go and translate each of them one by one. We have the alt text and everything. So we could do all these by hand too, but we're not going to do that because we have AI translation built right in. So I'm going to smash this batch AI translation. And in just a few seconds, boom, the entire page is translated. The AI just translated our entire web page. And if we close the localization view, go down to the toolbar here, select Dutch, we can see it all in context. And I can just tweak everything and make the page look exactly how I would expect it. So the thing that I really notice here is that translations, localizations, it's been taken uh, seriously as an integral part of the product. And I, I sort of feel like this is something that you can't achieve when you rely on like a third party provider. Like, was this something that was important to the team when they were building this? That's um, exactly one of the focuses that we've had the entire time while working on this project is we wanted to really lean into what is made possible by Framer being an end to get end to end integrated solution. And so we can do little optimizations from building it into our optimization pipeline to nice little UX sparkles that we can do uh, from the very beginning that make the whole experience fit together nicer. And so I think there's two things that, that really drove us making it a, a native solution for us. The first one is that I think a lot of people have some sort of SaaS product uh, or service fatigue of some sort where I don't wanna create another login. I don't wanna go through all the steps, figure out how to use a new UI. I just wanna hit a tiny little globe icon and ship a translated site in the same day. And that's an experience that we can provide for people. And that's what we've done in the end. And that that's the focus we've had from the very beginning. And the other side of that is that by having it deeply integrated in Framer, we get all those niceties of being able to like direct link into the CMS or build it into our optimization pipeline. And we even did stuff like redo a ton of the optimization pipeline to specifically work for our localization feature to run everything in, in parallel. And it makes everything just as fast. But these are sort of optimizations you can't make with a 30, third party integration. And so we're really proud of how deeply built into Framer and how native it feels. And I think that that really shows when you, when you start to use it and, and how fun it feels to translate a website. Great. Well, uh, thank you very much, Hunter, for showing us the product. Um, I can't wait to use it myself uh, for the for the rudimentary amount of, of Dutch that I know. Uh, but the AI there will be a massive help. So for now, I will uh, I'll say goodbye to you, 
and uh, say hello to Jonas. Okay, so now we're here with Jonas. He's the product engineer in charge of this amazing new feature. So Jonas, one thing I noticed is that it's possible not only to translate text in the big uh, table view, which I assume is like great for big workloads or for translators, but it's also possible to be on the canvas and uh, see translations and edit them in situ. Like how important was that for you as a uh, product engineer and as a team to, to make sure that you had the best of both worlds? When we started out, we actually only had uh, localization UI and context. And um, so you were, for example, able to add translations within the CMS in our initial version, as well as on the canvas. But then soon after, um, we figured that for professional translators, it would be much too hard to navigate documents. So um, we thought we should start from the single entry point, which is basically the localization table where all of your translatable values can be found. So only after having the table um, a couple of weeks or months later, we, we added the um, contextual localizations back. And not everywhere, but mostly just on the campus where it can be very useful um, to make edits because that's also the place where you will see if something will fit or not. I feel like there's so many places where text could live uh, that it, it, to, to give a, a translator just a design and have them like sift through it for everything that could be translated. It's like a little game of whack-a-mole. Whereas with our table view, uh, people can just go through bulk review, bulk edit, and of course use our AI translate feature to perform all of this much, much faster. Yeah, exactly. There were so many UX details to get right, especially with localization where there's a lot of repetition going on because um, it's very common that you have the same word repeated all over your website. Um, so yeah, we, need, we needed to make sure that it wouldn't feel like a burden to keep on repeating yourself. And basically every time there was repetition going on helping you out, don't you want to apply this to all the other similar words? And the same is not just for the initial time you write something down, but also, for example, in making a change. If you have um, applied one word to one to uh, a thousand items on your site, but you made a spelling mistake, it will be quite terrible if you have to go over all of them. So we make, made sure that if you made, if you fix the spelling mistake, and we see the same spelling mistake a uh, hundred other times or more, that we will basically give you the option right away to fix all of them. Well, congratulations on the release. It's uh, you know the biggest and best release I think in a long time. It's a beautiful feature and I think the reception to it has been really really positive so uh, yeah amazing amazing work thank you so much okay so don't tell anyone but during the interviews it came out that if you set your locale to a dog emoji the AI translator will and I'm not joking will um, translate all your text into woofs